Now we want to be able to publish the draft so that we can run the feed query and see whether it shows up there or not. We can see that there is a publish mutation, but I want to show you how you can do it in the, the Prisma Studio UI. If we go to the UI, we can look for a field called published, and we can see that it's false. We can change it to true now, and we can apply this change directly using the Prisma Studio UI. Now when we rerun the, the query, we can see that this, the publish is true. So if we comment out this create draft, we can now create a query that's called feed. We can get back the ID and the name, or title rather, and we can run this query and we can see that it gave us back one entry, which was the second draft. Now, if we go back to the Prisma UI and we change this back to false and update it, we should see that this entry goes away and it's because the feed is only publishing blog posts where the published field is true. An exciting architectural choice with Prisma 2 is that we no longer need a Prisma server to be running at the same time as our backend server. So you can see if I kill the, the Prisma 2 dev server that I, I'm running, you can still run queries against your backend. And that's because the Prisma 2 space dev is only running the studio UI that I'm showing you. And it's, it's not needed in order for your backend server to work. And what makes this really exciting then is if you wanted to migrate this over to, let's say, a, a serverless configuration where you're running this all in a Lambda function, the Rust query engine will run alongside your Lambda function, and you don't need a separate server that's running all the time like we did with the Prisma 1 configuration. Because there, you needed Prisma 1 running all of the time so that even if your backend server was a Lambda function, uh, you needed the Prisma there to be able to query and perform CRUD operations on, on your database.